the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You broke out of the curse. You were the coming wrath, but you were in keeping of repentance. And do not think you can say to yourself, he of Abraham is our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. It's already the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me, comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn, and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Then hey, but I'm excited. I got a new project I want to try out. It's for encouragement, for growth, and edification for all of us. Those of who profess themselves to be Christians is to let's read the entire Bible. One chapter at a time for the New Testament, one chapter at a time for the Old Testament, use the New Testament in the morning and at uh, nighttime, use the Old Testament. And incorporate that as part of your prayer, meaning it just becomes a routine thing with your prayer life. So, what I'm going to do is by being an example, let's actually go ahead and do that as well. Use them on YouTube. I recommend you do uh, subscribe so you can be notified when the chapter that you need to read comes up and you can come and keep up with it. Subscribe to the channel. You go to the channel and catch up with the ones that you may have missed. But let's let's get it one day at a time, you know. And what I like to do is I'm excited because I think it's the cover because we really do need to read the Bible for ourselves. Everybody that. And I encourage many of you to do that. The reason I'm doing this is because, like I said, it's the title, How to Read the Entire Bible, Read It One Day at a Time, with your morning and prayer, and use an audio book to help you read and pronounce some of those words, especially when you get to the Old Testament, I'm telling you something else. But also look at this right here. I put down the survey that was done. It was called, how much, it was called LifeWave Research Did It, How Much of Bible Have You Person Read? And you can see 10% none, 13% only a few sentences. 30% several passages or stories, 50% at least half of it, 12% almost all of it, 11% uh, all of it, and 9% all of it more than once. And the reason I don't want you just to read the Bible, I want you to get it, meditate on it, and get that in your heart and your spirit and get revelation that God gives you. So that's why the intent is for you to read these scriptures because you guarantee you you will grow in the things of god and then you'll have to depend on other people to tell you something and then when you go to church sir when the man said let's turn to such and such chapter you can sit and say i did that i read that chapter 
And, and then you get some more comments on that. So that you still understand what the man is trying to teach, but you keep it in content of those scriptures that they come in. Amen. Hey, I, I think you'll love it. I think I know you'll love it. I know you enjoy it because we got to change that stat that we just read. All right. So get ready. Go to the chapter that's up for the day. And don't forget to subscribe. And I guarantee you, we've been to knock out the New Testament. Uh, I think in about seven months. Listen, it's worth it so you can get to know your Bible and know who you are. Because what the scripture says who you are is more important than what people say that you are. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you and see you. Bye-bye. Look at this right here. This is the Lord's Prayer. This is what Christ taught his disciples, which means that this is something that was for all believers to use. It's just a matter, you don't have to use this verbatim, but it's just something you want to do. You see in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, after this man of death will pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, which is this word, it's what we're reading, will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day, meaning the daily prayer. That's why I encourage you to read the Bible daily as well as pray daily. Uh, our daily bread, and the daily bread, once again, is the Word of God. I mean, you're talking about local bread, we're talking about the Word of God. And forgive us our debts, we give our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for every man. For if you give men their trespasses, you have Father also forgive you. This is a reminder of Christ's attempt. It is important for you to give others, for your Father in heaven to forgive you. But if you give men not their trespasses, neither will your Father give your trespasses. So you want to remind yourself daily to forgive those who have offended you. Amen? And just remember 1 Timothy 2, 4, who would have all men to be saved and come to unto the knowledge of the truth. Once again, the knowledge of the truth is the word of God. You don't want to, it, it is no other truth given if you don't have the word of God with you. That's why you want to read it daily. That's why I encourage you to do this, to read the entire Bible over and over again. Romans 14, 12 says, and so then every one of us shall begin to count himself to God. And God is going to hold you accountable for understanding his word. He's not going to sit there and say, well, you pastor didn't tell you I got it. No. He's going to sit there and say, I told you to study. I told you to read the word of God. Amen? So that's what we do that. So, but the main thing is we can do this. We can read the Bible, the entire Bible, especially the entire New Testament, uh, one day at a time, one chapter at a time. And I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget, I do recommend pray daily too, just like Christ taught us to pray. Pray daily and pray his will, pray his word. That's what it is. Therefore, when you ask for things, you should remind them of his word. He wants you to love one another. God bless. I'll see you later. And don't forget to subscribe. If you subscribe, every time we bring a chapter out, you'll be notified. Then you go ahead and do that, do that reading for yourself. Amen? All right. God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.